Growth Hormone Deficiency Growth hormone is one of the main hormones in the body. It is very important not only for children, but also for adults. As the name implies, growth hormone causes growth. It is important for children to grow up and reach their maximum height. However, growth hormone is also important for adults who have grown to their maximum height as they need the hormone to help build and maintain healthy bone density and muscle mass, ensure the balance of body fluids, and maintain normal body composition of fats, water, and blood, control the level of sugar produced by the liver, and to enhance brain activity such as memory. The secretion of growth hormone from the pituitary is dependent upon stimulation from the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, which is a part of the brain immediately above the pituitary, secretes growth hormone releasing hormone into a rich system of blood vessels that travel down the pituitary stalk into the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Growth hormone releasing hormone acts directly on somatrophs or growth hormone cells of the anterior pituitary and stimulates the production and the secretion of growth hormone. Growth hormone is produced in pulses during the day with the highest frequency of pulses or production while we sleep. Growth hormone deficiency in adults is usually caused by damage to the hypothalamus or to the growth hormone producing cells of the pituitary gland. All right, let's see how this deficiency affects our body. Signs and symptoms of growth hormone deficiency include weight gain, decreased muscle mass and strength, which can affect exercise capacity, increased blood cholesterol and triglyceride levels, and decreased high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, levels, difficulty concentrating and memory impairment, and reduced vitality and fatigue. So, how do we diagnose growth hormone deficiency? The diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency has three steps. The first step is looking for signs and symptoms of GHD that we discussed earlier. The second step is measuring growth hormone levels. However, growth hormone from the pituitary is released into the bloodstream and has a short life of about 11 to 18 minutes, which can make measurement by blood samples very difficult. Growth hormone attaches to receptors on tissues throughout the body. After attaching to cells in the liver, Growth hormone stimulates the liver to produce insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1. This has a longer life and is able to be measured at any time during the day. IGF-1 is therefore used to monitor growth hormone levels. In this case, we expect IGF-1 to be lower than the normal range. The third step for definite diagnosis is growth hormone stimulation testing. There are several types of tests that can be used. Your doctor will prescribe the test that is best for you. All tests require fasting prior to testing. When diagnosis is complete, what should be the next action? Treatment, of course. The treatment of growth hormone deficiency is simple, to administer growth hormone. A daily subcutaneous injection of recombinant or manufactured growth hormone. This is usually supplied in the form of a pen type injection. As a summary, growth hormone deficiency occurs when there is damage to the hypothalamus affecting the production of growth hormone releasing hormone or to the pituitary cells that produce growth hormone. Growth hormone deficiency can occur in childhood and result in stunted growth, or in adulthood, causing a complex of symptoms, including muscle loss, bone loss, fatigue, and more. Normally, growth hormone is produced in the highest levels during sleep. Replacement is currently in the form of a nightly injection, just below the skin, 
or subcutaneously. Regular follow-up with an endocrinology team is necessary to monitor levels of IGF-1 in the blood while taking growth hormone.